Today, thanks to the quick action of my administration over the past few days, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. Your deposits will be there when you need them. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. President Biden reassured Americans that our banking system is safe in the aftermath of the second biggest bank failure in American history. Silicon Valley Bank, a.k.a. SVB, the country's 16th largest bank, collapsed last week when customers panicked and withdrew their money, $42 billion after the bank took a big loss. That led Signature Bank customers to panic and withdraw more than $10 billion in deposits there. Republicans, of course, are seizing upon this opportunity to use their new magic word and pin the crisis on wokeness, with Ron DeSantis and Congressman James Comer bringing up diversity initiatives and environmental investments as the supposed culprits in what happened with these banks. Well, here's the thing. Like all other banks, Silicon Valley's main goal is to make money Fortune describes it as the single most critical financial institution for the tech scene, serving half of all venture-based, venture-backed companies in the U.S., including, yes, clean energy startups, because that is where the money is. As The Atlantic's David Graham points out, the reason that SVB would want to advertise its programs on DEI, Environmental, Social, and Corporate Governance, or ESG, and other matters, is not because it was enthralled to woke ideology. It's because... That was a good business decision, i.e., they invest in stuff people like. And how does the tired meme brigade explain the presence of fervent Trumper and strictly anti-woke right-winger Peter Thiel, who was a big investor in SVB and who helped collapse the bank by yanking out millions of dollars on Thursday? Mm. Republicans may want to cast their blame inward instead. In 2018, Trump signed a law weakening Dodd-Frank and reducing oversight on banks like Silicon Valley after SVP's CEO directly lobbied for it. As Senator Elizabeth Warren wrote today, had Congress and the Federal Reserve not rolled back the stricter oversight, SVB and Signature would have been subject to stronger liquidity and capital requirements to withstand financial shocks. But they weren't because of deregulation. Joining me now is Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California, ranking Democrat on the House Financial Services Committee. Um, Congresswoman, thank you for being here. And I assume that this matter will come before your committee. Um, I, I do wonder, I just want to dispense with this really quickly. The right has already tried to make this a wokeness story because every story is a wokeness story. It's what the Wall Street Journal's Andy Kessler wrote. SVB notes that besides 91 percent of their board being independent and 45 percent women, they have one black one LGBTQ plus and two veterans. I'm not saying 12 white men would have avoided this mess, but the company may have distracted by diversity, been distracted by diversity demands. It does sound like he's saying 12 white men would have avoided this mess. What do you make of that? Well, let me tell you, uh, in examining as much as I can what has taken place, listening to the briefings that one that I put together with FDIC, uh, talking with uh, the Fed, so with Powell, uh, talking with Yellen over at the Treasury, what, what I know is this, uh, that the Silicon Valley Bank was a go-to bank to start up. Uh, basically, no other bank uh, would uh, support them for the most part. Many, I think, of the traditional banks didn't understand this innovation and all that the startups were trying to get funding for. And so it's like not only did they support the startups, they might have taken too much risk uh, in doing mm -hmm. it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you have to understand when we talk about regulation and deregulation, et cetera, uh, the financial services that banking community is interested in the bottom line. And so they're always going to be advocates for what they think will get the most money for them and take care of the customers that they want to serve. And so those of us who sit in the positions uh, like the Financial Services Committee, we have to be about regulation. We have to make sure we're protecting the people of this country. We have to make sure that we're watching the SEC, for example, our cop on the block. And so we have been in a struggle and we will always be in a struggle uh, because uh, their mission is a lot different from ours. And so you have this bank that was a go-to bank that was uh, supporting all of these startups, et cetera. And I don't know how they may miss looking at their balance sheets uh, to see what was going on. And of course, when they actually understood, I suppose, what was going on, it was too late uh, to borrow money. It was too late to sell securities. And so here we had a bank that collapsed. 
And in that collapse, it forced this government to have to come to grips or we, we had a real problem and we had to do something fast. We should be, the government should be complimented in the way that they put together protecting the depositors, both those that are insured, those that were not insured. How we were able to protect jobs and how we were able to get those payrolls done so that these uh, owners of these uh, small tech companies could pay their staffs, et cetera. We did a miraculous job. And we need to thank our agencies for doing that. We've got new questions that we've got to deal with. For example, what are we going to do about the uninsured from now on? We know uh, that the bank had 90% uninsured. We've got to deal with that. Let, let me ask you this, because you, you're talking about regulation. Uh, Greg Becker, who is the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank, he sold $3.6 million worth of stock in potentially problematic transaction, in, in a potentially problematic transaction days before the bank failed. So he's dumping stock. Um, we know that part of the, you know, the government, it, it, well, I guess they're not calling it a bailout, but helping these banks to stay afloat um, in, involves firing management. What can be done about that? I mean, you have a guy that's dumping stock, right, or dumping millions of dollars worth of stock before the bank collapses. Uh, that's a serious thing, and, and we must be concerned about it. And we're not bailing out the banks. We are really taking care of our depositors, both, again, insured and uninsured. And banks that have done, uh, you know, suspicious things are things that perhaps already in violation of regulation, of laws, are going to have to be accountable. They're going to have to be accountable for what they've done. Do, do you think that maybe this is this is one sort of element where it is a bipartisan issue? I mean, Barney Frank, who people remember as the Frank in Dodd-Frank, um, reportedly supported weakening some of these regulations, and then he left to then join the board of one of these two banks, Signature Bank. Is that an issue where you have members of Congress who understand the regulatory process, then going out into the private sector and joining these organizations on their boards and then supporting weakening the regulations? Well, you know, I think we have looked at those issues somewhat. We need to look at them uh, in depth and uh, determine whether or not we're going to do uh, in these instances like we've done in saying you can't lobby, you know, for a certain length of time. I think that those issues are worth looking at. Um, you know, Signature Bank was closed down, uh, and I think that that may happen with a few other banks. But I'm looking at Signature to see how much crypto was involved there. Uh, because we got to know what role did crypto play in any of this. So we have a lot to explore, a lot to yep. investigate, a lot to mm -hmm. understand. Uh, McHenry and I are getting together. We're going to have a hearing as quickly as we can. Uh, and we're going to try and work in a bipartisan way because we've mm -hmm. got to make sure uh, that we be concerned uh, continuously still about contagion. Uh, we don't right. know. Some, a lot of stuff still out there. And so we've Con got work to do. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. You're welcome. And thank you.